Hi, welcome. We are back here with Toya Foster from Pretty Tomboy Tees and Bling and Blue. And I have known Toya for a few years now because we were on the same podcast network together for a minute. Yes. And I just have to know, how did you get started with your businesses? Because you turned, first you started with bakery items. Mm -hmm. uh, Lisa, Lisa, tell me, help me out with the, the name of the Okay, bakery. so my businesses are called Pretty Tomboy Designs and oh, Blue so and Bling. That's okay. Blue and Bling. Sorry, pretty right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a long time ago, it was teased, but then it morphed into designs because I do so much. Um, okay, so I knew I wasn't crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A long time ago, it was that. Um, essentially, I've had two businesses for the past two years, mm -hmm. up until about four weeks ago. Um, my bakery business, which was Lisa's Sweets and Custom Treats. Lisa is the name of my mother. Um, she taught me everything I know. And then um, Pretty Tomboy Designs. So Lisa Sweets was uh, desserts, and I would sell them to individuals, but mostly corporate offices, restaurants, and stuff like that. It was my goal. Um, and then uh, Pretty Tomboy Designs started off as T-shirts. I was making T-shirts for myself. Um, and then I was doing a podcast on the network that we were on. And I was always, the, the podcast that I did, Secret Sauce, was about Black women entrepreneurs. They inspired me to start my business. Nice. So <clears throat> that's why I started mine, um, seriously started mine. Um, and so I started off as t-shirts, I'm a t-shirt and jeans kind of girl. Um, by the way, I'm scratching my dog's neck to keep her calm. Blue right there. I have a feel. I, just so people That's know. blue. Blue's right here. Blue. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show you blue by the end of the night. And then um, started off as t-shirts. People started asking me for t-shirts, and then it went into like tumblers, accessories, stuff like that. So. And, I mean, what and I I because I ordered the Killmonger uh, was right shirt. Oh, yeah, hell yeah, that was like. Woo! She said I ordered it too big and. I was like, nah, and then I get yeah. her. Maybe she's right. I did order it too big. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Wow, that was one of my first. Ew, I bet she's ugly too. Oh my God. Yeah. Don't make me get up um, and do it. Oh my God, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Oh my God. Yeah, that was one of my first. Yeah, that's how people, people started asking me because I was posting the way that started was I started posting for Black History Month. So I was like, I'm going to post a t shirt a day. And then people started asking me to make them. That's right. That's how all that started. Yep. Okay. Yep. And so mm -hmm. you were inspired by other entrepreneurs to become an entrepreneur yourself. Yes. But you are kind. Of, I I like the designs of your shirts because they're they're kind of they're kind of saucy. They're kind of spicy. They're not just your like typical shirt. Tell me what made you decide to go into that like kind of spicy kind of area of t-shirt and uh accessory design because you don't just like you said you don't just do t-shirts over the summer you had like the tanks with the little booty shorts with the sayings on <laughs> well they say make things that you make for yourself that you would wear that you would rock mm -hmm. i'm not cookie cutter so the stuff that i make isn't cookie cutter right so I make short sets that say melanin on it, or they say um, whole snack. Cause you know, I think I'm a whole snack. Or uh, I'll make a, a bling tumbler um, with a middle finger on it. Like I don't. I, I will do the things that I make are things that I love, mm -hmm. that I would wear or buy myself. It just so happens that people love it. Cool. That's literally how it works for me. And one of the see, this is my office as crazy as it looks right now. And one <laughs> of the ones that you put up that I kind of shared that got a lot of traction recently was that Prince cup, that Prince tumbler. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I have another iteration of it, but you're talking about the one that looks like this. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's. Yeah. Somebody asked for a different iteration of it. This is uh, their cup. Yes. Huh? Yeah. So um, 
you know, like I said, t-shirts is where I started, but um, a lot of people do t-shirts. Yeah. And kind of had to have a little talk with myself. Like if you're going to stay in a business, you need to kind of like do something different. Like, so I still do t-shirts, you know that. I still do short sets. That's the reason why I got into short sets was, you know, yeah, I do t-shirts, but let's do something a little different. Um, cups. I have a thing for cups. I just have a thing for cups. So like, if I see something fun in a store that has like a fun design on it, or if it had, it never has my name. I ain't fucking forget that. But if it has like a design or something fun on it, I want it. I gotta have it. Or it's got like a really cool handle on it. I gotta have it. Right. So I started thinking, okay, why not make some? You know what I mean? Why not get into making cups and there's not a lot of especially not a lot of black women in the tumbler side of things so I decided to get into it and so you want me to show you some of the ones I'm working on now yes we do we want everyone to see them so someone asked me for a wine barrel this is a wine barrel cup oh that's nice uncle Maris is like a gloss or a glaze on top of it yeah 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 there's always a glaze on top. Okay. Um, but these are like things that, you know, I don't know, like I, I feel like I just put my spin on it and I have fun doing it and it makes me happy. I posted this one yesterday or the day before and I got a lot of feedback for it. So my friend wanted a, okay, I'm gonna take that off, yeah, it's better. My friend wanted a um, Atlanta Braves cup. Mm -hmm. So my vision was to make one that looks like a bat. Okay. So that's what this is. Nice. It looks like a bat. And it was a lot of fun to make. So I just make things that, like I said, like I just would enjoy. We we'll loved it. Like, I don't want to give this to him right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to give this one, but, you know, he did pay for it. So, so I let me have you always been like a creative artistic person? Is that something that you kind of grew into later on? Yeah, I've always been creative. Both of my parents were creative. Mm -hmm. My father was a painter. My mother was a um, crochet um, quilter. Okay. So like when you do your quilting, I always mm -hmm. think of my mom. Um, she and my father really inspired me to to create so I started I've been selling since I was a kid I've been selling candy I sold candy when I was a kid in in school mm -hmm. like I was that kid yeah. um but uh as far as creativity I started making jewelry when I was in my early 20s okay and then um I got frustrated with marketing and trying to find my niche like I couldn't figure out what my niche would be mm -hmm. so I kind of got out of it and then, you know, I, I just feel this pull to get back into entrepreneurship. Like, it's, I'm not made to work for someone else. I've kind of come to that realization. So I just use my creativity to, you know, make other things. Um, yeah. So with the business, so, so let me ask you, because like you said, we were on the podcast network together. You had done Secret Sauce for a while. And that... <laughs> The, interv the interviews that you used to do, it wasn't just like your run-of-the-mill interviews. You found a wide variety of women. You talked to mm -hmm. cosplayers, you talked to business women, you talked to authors and writers. Mm -hmm. What is it about Black women, aside from being a Black woman yourself, that draws you to that type of promotion, that desire to do that type of promotion? Because... When I think about the designs on from Tomboy Designs, yeah, anybody can wear them, but they are a lot of them are centered in blackness. A lot of them are centered in black womanhood. Yeah, um, I just love us so hard. Um, I'm always inspired by black women. Mm -hmm. I know what it is to be a black woman and you know, keep getting stepped on, but you keep pushing people out of the way and achieve even though, even though. Yeah. And so that even though inspires me, like the fact that you have an even though 
as far as me to have my even though, you know, mm. there's no one that has a, a, a bigger even though than black women. It just, it just isn't. So when I see us achieve and we achieve so many ways in so many areas of life, when I see that we achieve and we constantly achieve, despite, even though, it inspires me. And so I'm always looking for designs that reflect that um, in a way that um, I, I can't say that my stuff is classy. I would say my stuff is more like uh, a classy ratchet. Like I like to have fun, but I also I also don't bring us down. And it's like a it's like a, a fine line I like to like to balance, and I think um, that kind of separates separates me from other people. Uh, and I just want us to you know shine like those short sets. The best part of the short sets that I sold last year, I sold an insane amount of short sets last year. I've already started selling them this year. You would think with the Rona, nobody wants to wear them. No, no. I've got short sets people want to buy right now. Like, um, the one thing about the short sets that inspired me was so many Black women that were like, you just made me feel beautiful. You made me feel like I'm special. You, you, your, your outfit just gave me so much inspiration. You made me feel like just for that one moment that I'm pretty and important. And like, how can you not? create for people when they think that way do you know what i mean yeah but that so, that um, i'd get to i'd get to work <laughs> yeah. get to work. i swear to god every single short set that i sold last mm -hmm. year every single person sent me a picture of them in it I never asked for it never asked for it but there's they were so happy there's your marketing right there <laughs> i should yeah, I should I, I should really put a post out and say, are you guys okay with me doing that? Because literally every single short set I've ever sold, they sent a picture or they posted it on Facebook or they said, you know, they wanted me to see, they would tag me and, and put it somewhere on, on social media. So yeah, like I just love creating for black women. I do more than any other person. I know that I'm kind of like putting myself in a tiny hole I know that um but I just want to serve our community you know what it is so I think so often that we worry about being accessible to everyone when not everyone is worried about being accessible to us and I'm not saying that that's a reason to exclude anyone but I think there's value in centering us for a change we have a large buying we have a lot of buying power mm -hmm. we have a lot of influence on cultural norms and fashion why not when i mean yeah you'll have the people well why does it have to be about race and black? you know what when it's always stop, about race shut up you stop making it about race we'll stop making it about race how's that <laughs> yeah no one says that when the idea of a nude stocking is caucasian flesh tones no one says why are we always worried about race then so why should we say that now with businesses that do focus and center black women exclusively mm -hmm. I don't it think really it's is that. yeah all of the the clothes that i make is really for black women i might have sold like one or two things to someone white but it's very rare <laughs> Let me ask you, because this is the conversation I had with someone before, and it's something, you know, I, I feel like, you know, I've had this conversation in a roundabout kind of way, but it's something mm -hmm. that I kind of struggle with. Do you ever struggle with imposter syndrome? Because I feel like that is not unique to Black women. I think it's, we find it more amongst women in general. But I think when society is telling us to doubt ourselves as Black women, we see it a lot amongst Black women. When you first decided to jump into these ventures and branch out and become an entrepreneur, did you ever struggle with that? Do you struggle with that? I struggle with it every day. What are you talking about? Every day. Listen, every time I put, every time I click send or every time I click um, post on social media, mm -hmm. my stomach is a knot. Mm. Every 
single time. At this point, I should be beyond it. Listen, this is a good example. This. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. You could say, if you had the wherewithal to like put those in like arenas once the arenas start opening, like the stadiums, it would sell. That's gorgeous. Thank you. But <laughs> this. Mm. Not for days. All right. Yeah. So like I talked to my roommate. I'm like, do you think he likes it? Because I'm I think it's cute. Like I I put a lot of work in. Do you oh, think my. he likes it? I hit him up. Are you okay if I post it? Cause I think you'll like it, but I want to make sure, you know, I don't want you to be disappointed, you know. It's your work. <laughs> I would love to see it posted. I post it. Stomachs in knots until he speaks. He's like, oh my God, that's fire. I'm better now. Yeah. Every single time. When it comes to my restaurant business, every single person that's ever had my dessert says, oh my God, girl, your dessert should be in a restaurant. Every time, right before people bite into it, stomach, torn up in knots. There is not a time that my stomach isn't in knots, but I've learned to not let that stop me. I have learned that I have to push through it. Mm -hmm. And I have to honestly say, there's rarely been a time where I've been like, oh my God, I shouldn't have done that. More times than not, I'm like, good job. You should have done that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But imposter syndrome, it's right here. Hi, my bestie, he's right there. <laughs> For sure. So I know I challenged you and we challenged each other. We're accountability partners in this YouTube thing. Uh, okay, well, listen. What we got going on with it? It's either the YouTube or the website. What are we doing? <laughs> listen. Okay. This is the thing. I got swamped with orders. So it's not that I'm not doing it, but good God. Yeah, I need to finish. <laughs> YouTube and website. I need to finish. I was thinking about paying somebody to do it. That's how swamped I am right now. Like going on Fiverr and being like, yo, finish my website or yo, you know, set up my YouTube. I might have somebody set up my YouTube because I could do a logo clearly and I yeah. could do an animation. You did my logo. You did my animation, which I use. Animation. Um, I use the logo obviously on the site. I'm using the animation as the like trailer for new visitors. Love it. Love it. And I'm learning Adobe Premiere Pro out of all of this. And I'm having fun being a goofball with that <laughs> and certain gifts and stuff like that. Um, yeah. I even did my own video. I didn't just do interviews. I did, did it. Did you do your own? So you only I, have one that I you did? Five, I have a five minute video explaining why I'm doing this channel. It's up. So a part of our accountability was hold each other accountable. So I'm Fair. still waiting. Fair. I'm just shooting at me. <laughs> Fair. Fair. No, you're right. I don't have an excuse. I don't have an excuse. I feel like, oh, I feel like my days are never long enough. Like, prior, you know what? I'm super creative, but I'm terrible at prioritization. Can we talk about things I'm terrible at? Organization <laughs> and prioritizing things. Yeah. Horrible at it. Horrible at it. Like, I will start my day at eight o'clock. I'll start my day at eight o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning, and then I'll turn around and it'll be 11. And then I'll turn around and it'll be four. And then I'll mm -hmm. turn around and it'll be nine. And I'm like, oh my, go to bed. Where did the day go? Yeah. yeah, like my day goes like that all the time. So you're right. I will work on that this week. You are absolutely right. Yeah, I'm just saying it can help. With it. You're doing a great job with your branding and marketing and this will just take it to the next level. No, you're right. You're right. Because I want to start, I really need to start. I do great with the people I know. I need to start branching on people I don't know mm -hmm. for sales. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, Instagram and YouTube would be really helpful. And now that we're stuck at home, and I'm going to be stuck at home, I don't care what Georgia says, Ooh, then. Hmm, yeah, I'll then, see y'all on Twitter. How's that? <laughs> Georgia is tripping right now. 
yeah. tripping. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're right. Get that website up. Let me give myself a week. One of those two will be done in a week. Mm -hmm. How's that? Is that a good time frame? Yes, I will allow it. Okay. Okay. One of those two will be done. All right. <laughs> <laughs> But do you, do you, I know you have your Instagram. Do you have a Facebook page for your, okay. So well, my we'll, Facebook page is Pretty Tomboy Design. It is okay. not blue and bling. Okay. The reason why I wanted to change it to blue and bling is because I wanted to make it more of a lifestyle because mm -hmm. it would include my desserts. That way I can do, say I want to do a dessert on there. I could do a dessert or I could do a jewelry a piece of jewelry if I wanted to or you know I could teach you how to bling a cup you know what I mean yeah. like it, it it really um encompasses everything but I have two Facebook pages already we'll include the links below where and they can yeah. follow you for updates I have Instagram too oh cool oh yep I, I will include that as well anything else you want to share for the good of the order no no. no, no, hug a black woman today. Well, well, not the black woman I mean, well, <laughs> you know in your household. There you go. Send her a virtual air hug. Air hug. Yeah, air hug. Air hug a black woman today. She deserves it. Send her a kiss. Mm -hmm. But no, please do not send black women notes, please. We, we, we. Unsolicited. That's what I was getting at, yeah. Yeah, unsolicited, yeah, don't do that. Hold that back, resist that urge. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh, you're hilarious. Anyway, thank you so much. My pleasure, boo. <laughs>